Hey, what's up and welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today we're talking about being overbooked and overwhelmed. What do you do when your Fiverr inbox is just overwhelming you? You have too many orders. How do you get through that? How do you maintain good reviews? And how do you keep it up, whether on Fiverr or somewhere else? Stick around, we're gonna talk about all this and more in today's video. So over the last few weeks, I've seen some trends in the comments. People have been saying one of two things, either they've not had enough business, they're wondering what's happening on Fiverr, they're not getting any messages, any orders, anything like that, or people are completely overwhelmed. And this is a result of something that Fiverr does intentionally with their algorithm called the carousel. They have a carousel algorithm where you'll be placed in some of the higher spots at some points and other people will be placed in those spots at other points. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but that's the, the reality of their algorithm. So that means that there are times when your gigs will go in and out of popularity very quickly. Um, you'll go from not very busy to really busy at some times, and it's often hard to handle. And I have two questions here from you all, from you great people who leave me questions all the time. And if you've got one, leave it in the comment section below. I may answer it in a future video. Two questions that are both surrounding slightly different, but very very similar ideas and the ideas are what do I do when I'm overbooked and overwhelmed? So the first question, I'm just going to answer them both as two separate questions, but they're similar. The first question is from Ramona Brown and Ramona wants to know, um, well, first off, she says, thank you so much for your valuable tips. Well, Ramona, I'm glad you think they're valuable and I'm glad that you think they're really helpful. She says they're really helpful. I'm a freelancer since 2018. So she's been doing this a while, almost five years. She says, I need to know if I receive too many messages from my clients daily, how should I manage my inbox properly? There are so many new orders which I can get from their messages, but the problem is I have no time to manage my inbox, to chat with them and get orders. Is there any way I can assign someone else to manage only my inbox and get sales and pass them to particular freelancer to a particular freelancer to work on it so that I can stay freely as a boss. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> uh, Ramona, I, I see the sentiment. I see what you're trying to do. And, and that's good. As you grow as a, as a freelancer, you should be looking for ways to increase your output without it increasing your personal output. But I think there are a couple issues with kind of your approach to, to this question, if you will. And I don't want to give you too hard of a time because I know um, some of this is just me picking up on, on buzzwords and keywords that I find um, to be common among freelancers or people, entrepreneurs. Uh, they want to be a boss. And, and I'll be the first to tell you, you don't want to be a boss. You don't want to be anybody's boss. Being a boss means people hate you. People don't like working for you. People despise and sustain dealing with you. You don't want to be anybody's boss. What you want is a team of people that you are leading. There's a difference between a boss and a leader, and you want to be a leader of people down there working with them, alongside them, getting things done. Yes, maybe working less as time goes on, but you don't want to be a boss setting up on a throne, barking down orders at other people. So you don't want to be a boss. I'll just address that right off because I don't like that word, and I don't think anybody should aspire to be a boss because bossy people are not well thought of. You want to be a great leader. So I think that's the heart of your question anyway. So the answer to this is when it comes to Fiverr, there is no way to give somebody individual access to only your inbox. The only way to, to share the load on Fiverr for communication is to give someone your login and share that login for the entire account. That means they have access to everything. Now, that, that's risky, and I've talked about that in past videos before about how if you are ready to do this, you better make sure you're really ready, it's really necessary, and you really trust the person that you're, you're bringing on because if that person does something wrong, if they say something wrong in, a, in an inbox message, if they break the terms of service, that's you. doesn't matter if it's somebody working for you, they will shut down your account. So... On the other side, I can say that I've been doing this for five plus years and have never had a misstep, meaning I've trained my people well, I've had really trustworthy people in there working with me and for me, and, and we've never really had an issue. 
And there are times in the early days when my assistant was the one hands, answering some of, not all of, some of the inbox message and messages. And in a sense, they were really just answering the the ones that could be answered with um, kind of a, a quick response. They, I was still handling they they were. Um, earmarking and I was handling the hard things, the difficult questions, but you know, I get 50 plus messages a day and they were just helping me clear them out. Today, I'm the only one who handles the inbox, but I have people who do the order page uh, flows for me. I have project managers that handle those things for me. So let me just address it this way. No, you can't give someone just access to your inbox, but I do understand that the inbox is an overwhelming thing for a lot of people, right? I will also say that the reason I handle the inbox personally today is exactly what you said. I think you said it. Um, there are so many new orders that I can get from their messages, but the problem is I have no time to manage my inbox. That's the reason I handle the inbox is because there is so much possibility for for uh, obtaining new business, getting new orders in place through the inbox. I think the inbox is the most powerful tool in the Fiverr tool belt. Your communication with potential customers and clients, the way you talk to them, the way you sell. I've have other, I've had other people in my inbox before, but I'll tell you, I'm more effective. I'm the best salesperson on my team. Why? Because I know my product the best. I've been doing it the longest. I know everything in and out, and it takes me far less time, and I'm far more effective. In in the inbox than anyone else. So I would say um, to you, Ramona, the inbox is a weapon that you're not fully utilizing. And if you are overwhelmed, I would get some help in building a team to actually do the creative output. And your, your wisdom and experience, if you're overbooked already, then hey, that means you're doing something right. So get some help on the output side of things. Um, but again, it has to be done really well. You have to make sure that you have a great team of people, that you're not just pulling in someone who works for cheap that you're paying someone well so that they're going to do the job well and they understand the responsibility, the 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 weight of using this platform and how to use it properly. Um, maybe hook them up on some of these videos so they learn how to do these things. But uh, at the end of the day, you should never aspire to be somebody who just sits in a chair and barks orders at people. You want to be down there doing something and you need to find a lane in which you can work in this business as a freelancer along with other freelancers if that's your goal. And I've done videos about that before, even recently go watch those. If that's your goal, then you need to find a way where you can still have your hands in the most important stuff and grow a team around you that will help you not to be overwhelmed with the work that you're you're all working together and in concert and you can lean on each other. Uh, sometimes you might do different things when somebody's gone than you do on a regular week, but you want a team. You don't want to be a boss and I would argue that you should be managing the inbox. That's the most important part um, other than the actual product. But, uh, you know, there are lots of great creatives that you can train to do some things the way you've been doing them. It is a hard and long process, but it's worth it to start building that team. So um, that that's kind of a lot of different answers to one question. But hopefully that helps Ramona and hopefully that helps all those of you that are getting overwhelmed by what do I do? I need some help in the inbox. Um, try to figure out where the best place in your business to get help is and it's not always not always answering messages in an inbox because that's very valuable whether in Fiverr or somewhere else all right now this next question I can't boy let me decipher the username Elfian Metal hmm that like like elves like elfish uh, like Lord of the Rings Elfian Metal okay he asks hey I don't know if you've already answered this question or made a video about it, but how do I manage the overbooked, um, I think he means the overbooked feature on Fiverr. My orders with the longest delivery uh, is are seven days, but I found myself with about 15 orders to be delivered in the same week. I also know that that setting the gig to overbooked is not good for the profile. What can I do not to end up in this situation and still not go crazy? Well, Elfian Metal, this this is a really good question because um, what he's referring to, if you're not aware, is that Fiverr has a feature where you can limit orders in the queue. 
Basically, this is a an automated feature where you say, okay, I don't want more than five orders in my queue. I can only handle five orders at a time. And you set it to five. Once you have five orders that you're working on, it stops. And the reason he says, I know that setting your gig to overbooked is not good for you is because it's not. It actually pulls you out of the search results so people can't order from you. Um, or it'll place something on your page. Uh, they change this all the time. So forgive me if I don't know exactly what it does because I've never used it. Um, but it, essentially, it pulls you out of the rhythm. If you do appear, someone gets on your thing, it'll say so-and-so is overbooked. Uh, you can't order from them now. Come back later. It, it just turns potential buyers away and has it's proven to have a negative effect on your ability to stay relevant in the search results. So I wouldn't advise that. But he, all, he wants to know, hey, you know, how do I manage this when I got 15 orders? Uh, the answer is simple. Extend your turnaround times. So there are two things to do when you're overbooked and overwhelmed, okay? You can extend your turnaround times or you can raise your prices. Now, you be careful with both of those things. They're both huge changes to the infrastructure of your business. But if you're constantly overbooked, I talk about this in a lot of my past videos, if you're constantly overbooked, it means that your prices are too low. The demand is too high. The supply of your time doesn't change. It's constant. So the demand is too high. You need to bring the, the demand down by making more on each transaction. The supply of your time is is finite. It is not infinite. There is only a certain set amount of your time, amount of work that you can do. So outside of the idea, like we talked about before, of adding team members, you have to realize that either your turnaround times have to get longer or your prices have to go up, maybe both, okay? Now, what you want to do in both cases is make sure you do these things small and in incremental ways so that it's not like, well, today the service costs 100, but I'm overbooked, so now it costs 200. That might be a big jump, 100%. You know, maybe you go up 20%. There was a period of time in my freelance career where my prices went up sometimes two or three times a year to keep up with demand. I was doing it all by myself. I was overwhelmed. I thought, gosh, if, if, if I can make a little bit more per project, I don't need to do so many projects projects, you know, and I started to walk up the ladder. It was a very incremental step up the ladder toward higher prices, fewer clients um, versus high volume and, and lower prices. They're, they're two different models and you have to figure out where you fit into that. But I would say for you in the temporary, maybe extending turnaround times or maybe, you know, I've even gone to customers where I've said, you know what, I just had a crazy amount of bookings this last week and I'm a little overbooked. Would you mind if I had a few extra days and phrase it as a question? Hey, would you mind? And so if they say, no, I really need it in the seven days you promised it, then you say, okay, no worries, I'll do that. But I'm just asking if anybody's got flexibility on their timeline. Oftentimes people are much nicer than we give them credit for. People are great uh, a lot of times. I mean, the vast majority of times. And, and a lot of them give you the leeway you need. Maybe we'll extend the gig by a couple days or maybe even another week to give you time. But yes, if this is happening more often than not, and it's a common stressor for you, then you need to look at raising your prices or extending your turnaround time. I know everyone is reluctant to do that, but there will be a point where in the market you feel out when you've kind of reached the tip. For instance, I did that for probably five years. I was constantly increasing turnaround time and price as demand went up for my services, but I haven't changed prices in about two years. I haven't gone up on my prices in over two years because um, we kind of reached that sweet spot where it's like, you know what? Yeah, this this is perfect for where we are, who we're, we're selling to, and what our team's doing and all that. It just, it works. So you can feel that when you're in the market every single day. And I would say, you know, if you're not a little bit overwhelmed, if you're not a little bit overbooked, then, then maybe the quality of your product needs to increase. Maybe your prices are too high and they need to come down. Maybe your turnaround times are too long and they need to come down. You know, it's the opposite effect. And so whether you're on the side of, uh, of life where you wonder when your next order will come and you're not getting any messages, or you are on the side where I can't manage this, I might need some help, I need to raise my prices, I'm overbooked, 
you need to evaluate what you're doing in comparison to the market and find a way to, to meet in the middle to make sure that what you're doing is a good fit for the market, but it's also appropriately placed based on the quality and value you offer your customers. And again, value is more than just the end product. Value is the experience. It's how they communicate with you. You know, uh, that's something that, that we often tout as, as a team. My team is that our value is great. We have great communication. We have great quality. We have great follow through. And we're here uh, in the long run in case you need help down the road. So figure out what value you offer and match that to where you are, your prices, your turnaround times, and all that. Because uh, I believe there will always be a certain amount of tension in the freelance lifestyle of, uh, could my prices be higher? Are they a little too high? Could I be making a little bit more money? When is my next you know, uh, uptime gonna come? I'm in a valley, all of this stuff. There's always a little bit of tension, but what you need to do as a freelancer is be okay with constantly tweaking your position to resolve that tension, knowing that it'll never be fully resolved. You know, there has to be a little tension on that band to keep things in line, to keep a freelancer uh, on the edge of survival and keep you going, but but it's never going to fully resolve. So get comfortable with that tension, release your shoulders just a little bit, go get a massage or maybe a pedicure or, or you know, whatever you do to have fun, unwind and relax and stop worrying about these things so much. I say this as a guy who spent a fair amount of time over the last month worrying over things, changes that Fiverr has made, changes in the search um, the search algorithms and, and just the way that Fiverr is marketing and all these things, asking questions, making modifications to my gig. And at the end of it, I say, you know what? Worry less, do the right things. You'll always come out on top. Quality people will always have a place in the marketplace. Stop worrying so much. So I hope those answers were helpful for you today. Hey, if you made it to the end of the video, Rav O, some of you caught my little my little ending last week and said you were still watching all the way to the end as I made some funny faces, but I really do appreciate those of you that watched to the end. If you have questions, ask below because I am answering your questions. I respond to almost every question down there that I can. I really enjoy this community. Thanks for being a part. And if you're still here, like and subscribe. Uh, new videos every single week. Gonna keep bringing these to you guys some fun stuff coming up, some new locations coming up this spring as I travel. Looking forward to bringing that to you. And until next time, keep doing because the future favors the doers.